Namaste angels. I've decided to do a daily for um, December 21st, the, the solstice. So December 21st is the 355th day of the year. So that's a 13, 4 or 11, 11. And of course it's 12, 21 this year. The day itself will be a seven or God spirituality, uh, depending upon how you look at it. Most I, I quote unquote speak about five different numeric languages in addition to, you know, having degrees in accounting. So that's like another um, numeric language in of itself. Um, and the meanings typically for seven, it's surrounding spirituality and or God. Um, there are 10 days remaining in the year. In the Northern Hemisphere, December 21st is usually the shortest day of the year, and sometimes it's regarded as the first day of winter, so it absolutely will be this year. And then I'm going to go to um, onthisday.com to go over some different things in history that happened on December 21st. In the year 1620, 103 Mayflower pilgrims land at Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts. 1891, the first game of basketball is played on rules created by James Nysmith, and it is played by 18 students, also in Springfield, Massachusetts. 1898, French scientists Pierre and Marie Curie discover radium, the chemical radium. 1937, the first full length, which is an 11, by the way, the first full length animated feature film and the earliest in the Walt Disney animated classic series, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, premieres at the Carthay Circle Theater. 1988, Lockerbie disaster. Pan Am Flight 103 is destroyed mid-air by a terrorist bomb killing all 258 people on board over Scotland. So, um, that's the second 103 on this day or four or 1111 or 13, however you want to look at it. I began with the year 1620, 103 Mayflower pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. And now flight 103 is destroyed on this same day, um, several years, centuries even later. Did you know the first crossword puzzle with 32 clues is printed in the New York world on December 21st in the year 1913. Famous birthdays, Thomas Beckett, Benjamin Disarelli, Walter Hagen, Jane Fonda, Hugh Jontu, and Chris Everett. Would you believe Gangnam Style began, becomes the first video to reach 1 billion views on YouTube on December 21st in the year 2012. That's um, the year of the like big awakening and the time, you know, so for some people they say it happened to them on the 12th, this 12, 12, 12. Uh, some people claim to have experienced it on the 21st, if at all that year. Um, but the huge awakening of, of spiritual beings. Famous weddings, 1762, British explorer Captain James Cook marries Elizabeth Batts. 1886, the founder of the Girl Scouts of the USA, Juliet Gordon Lowe, who was 26 at the time, weds William McKay Lowe in Savannah, Georgia. 1947, actress Estelle Getty, 24, weds Arthur Gettleman. 1958, actress Ingrid Bergman, 43, weds producer Lars Schmidt. 1959, the Shah of Persia marries Farah Deba. Famous divorces on this day, 1945, American author and journalist of The Old Man in the Sea, Ernest Hemingway, and journalist Martha Gellhorn divorce after five years of marriage. And in 2010, the Lord of the Rings actor, Sean Bean, who was 51, divorces actress Georgina Sutcliffe, who was 32, due to irreconcilable differences after only two years of marriage. Famous deaths. Frank Kellogg, F. Scott Fitzgerald, George S. Patton, and Alfred Gross. Alfred Gross was an inventor, a pioneer in wireless technology. Gross helped invent the walkie-talkie, Citizens Brand Radio, the telephone pager, and the cordless telephone. He was born on February 22nd in 1918 and was a Pisces from Toronto, Canada. He died on December 21st in the year 2000 at the age of 82 of natural causes. 
George S. Patton was a U.S. World War II general. He is famous because he commanded the 7th U.S. Army and the 3rd U.S. Army as well during World War II. He was born on November 11th in the year 1885. So he was born on 11, 11, 11, 11. Right, 11 for November, 11 for the date, and 1885 also equals 1111. He was a Scorpio from San Gabriel, California, USA. He died on December 21st in 1945 at the age of 60 of congestive heart failure. And that's one of the things I meant by my I speak <laughs> uh, numerical languages. I, I look at a date and it's already broken down that instant. F. Scott Fitzgerald was an author. He's famous for The Great Gatsby. He was born on September 24th in 1896 and was a Libra from St. Paul, Minnesota, USA. He died on December 21st in 1940 at the age of 44 of a heart attack. Frank Kellogg was the U.S. Secretary of State at some point. He co-authored the kellogg Bryan Pact for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in the year 1929. He was born on December 22nd in 1856, which is 9-11 or 11, and was a Capricorn from Potsdam, New York, USA. He died on December 21st in 1937 at the age of 80 of pneumonia, 1937, also 11. The year he was born and the year he died. And going up to the births, Chris Everett is a tennis legend. She won 18 Grand Slam singles championships and three doubles titles and was the year ending world number one singles player every year, every year <laughs> between 1974 and 1981, with the exception of 1979. Overall, she won 157 singles championships and 29 doubles titles and reached more Grand Slam singles finals then, which was the number was 34 to be exact, more than any player, man or woman in professional tennis history. She was born on December 21st in 1954 and is 62 years old, a Sagittarius from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hugh Jintao, paramount leader of China. General Secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China from 2002 through 2012. His tenure was characterized by collective leadership and consensus-based technocratic rule. He was born on December 21st in 1942 and is 74 years old, a Sagittarius from Taizhou, Jianshu, J-I-A-N-G-S-U, China. Jane Fonda is an actress. She rose to fame in the 1960s with such films as Barbella and Cat Value. She has won two Academy Awards and an Emmy Award and seven Golden Globe Awards. She's been an activist for many political causes. Her counterculture era opposition to the Vietnam War and associated activities were controversial. She's protested the Iraq War and the violence and violence in general against women and describes herself as a feminist. She was born on December 21st in 1937 and is 79 years old, a Sagittarius from New York City, New York. Walter Hagen is a golfer, was a golfer. He was one of golf's greats. He won 11 professional majors. So 11 is a popular number on this date. He was born on December 21st in 1892, which is 9-11 or 11. Speak of 11. And he was a Sagittarius from Rochester, New York, USA. He died on October 6th in the year 1969 and was 76 at the time. He passed away of cancer. Benjamin Disarelli, also known as Benjamin Disarelli, the first Earl of Beaconsfield, was a British prime minister 
and a statesman who twice served as prime minister. He played a central role in the creation of modern conservative party. He is remembered for the influential voice or his influential voice in world affairs and his political battles with the liberal party and specifically leader William Gladstone. This really defined the policy of conservatives and making it the party most identified with glory and power of the British Empire. He is the only British prime minister of Jewish birth although his name sounds quite Italian to me. He was born on December 21st in the year 1804 and was a Sagittarius from London, England, United Kingdom. He died on April 19th in the year 1881 and was 76 years old at the time of bronchitis. And lastly, Thomas Beckett was the Archbishop of Canterbury. Commoner made good. He was appointed as Archbishop by King Henry II. They argued over church privileges and Becket was killed by four knights who took the king at his words. Who will rid me of this troublesome priest? Subsequent canonized, or he was subsequently, I think they should have said, canonized by Pope Alexander III. The king made public penance at Canterbury Cathedral. So he was like saying something, I guess, halfway in jest, and they really killed the guy. He was born on December 21st in the year 1117. So 1117 is Raphael. That's interesting. Um, and was a Sagittarius from Cheapside, London, England. He died on December 29th in the year 1170. So the same numbers. The year he was born was 1117. And the year he died was 117 or 1170. He was 53 at the time, the cause of death, assassination. And with that, let's get into what's going on for the day for us. All right, I'm going to get the dice too. We are beginning with Dirty Movie. 29, that's that spiritual partnership. And email, maybe Uranus. As a matter of fact, today, the day on which I'm doing this recording is the 20th. Um, today, there is an Aquarius moon, Aquarius ruled by Uranus. Ooh, for the 21st, Spirit says, try again. Sex, which came up all weekend in both, I think, um, the general and the love reading. And continue to 29, right? Forge spiritual partnerships, whether they be business or romantic or friendships. Oh, I was going to shuffle again. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> I'm going to go to the Angel Tarot, see what we get for the day, beginning with release or death, the end of a phase or situation, spiritual transformation. It's time to move on. For one thing, it's literally the end of a season, right? So... Fall ends, winter begins with the solstice. And in our lives, there should be some ending and beginnings of new seasons. And opening to Night of Fire. Passionate, adventurous, self-assured, and restless. This can still be the Sagittarius moon lingering. A sudden event that needs immediate attention. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. The Night of Fire is passionate, adventurous, self-assured, and restless. He is Prince Charming. To me, at least. And here can absolutely be a Scorpio, even though this is a fire sign. Mars, um, which is the red planet uh, and ruler of Aries, fellow fire sign to Sagittarius and Leo, also rules Scorpio. The death card represents the sign of Scorpio. Some of you may have an actual Scorpio divine masculine, um, perhaps, or it could be the feminine too that is planning on taking on this uh, night of fire, Prince Charming role in your life. Release or death again, and followed by the tower. Wow. Um, with Archangel Chamuel. A significant life event, a powerful revelation that leads to change. It's time to spread your wings. The tower, uh, many people are afraid of in the tarot, and, and depending upon what deck you have, it can be like the scariest card in the deck looking at it. But... For me, it's more neutral. Sometimes the tower is good, sometimes the tower is bad. One thing you know, it's gonna be abrupt and it's gonna like shake up your life. So 
the end, likely, of something in your life causes a shakeup because maybe change. It could be the change alone that makes you go like, oh. Um, release or death. Also, it just came to me that I had meant to clarify something. So those of you who saw my moon reading, um, I went into briefly this thing about the light versus dark. Um, given that this is the season of Hanukkah also, speaking of seasons, and the season of Hanukkah or the holiday of Hanukkah is all about, um, similar to Diwali, it's the festival of lights and it is about light over dark, good over evil. That's what the celebration is and that's what, you know, what we uh, recognize. And I really do think that that is an important um, factor in our lives, very literal right now. And I mentioned that and I'm not sure that I was clear that even those that we, that may appear sometimes to be of the light, there's ways to tell ultimately that they are not and that we should see them. The scriptures say we should know people by their fruit, right? Um, it's something like you can't get grapes from a fig tree, I think it is, um, and something about thistles like that, that, that would prick you. I do remember the scripture. It's Matthew seven sixteen, So seven, seven. And I did say that this day was going to be a seven. So maybe that's why I'm being made to bring this up now. The tower card is also major arcana card number 16, which is seven. So maybe that's why I was reminded just now too. Um, yeah. So we're going to recognize them. And also in the book of Matthew, the 721, 723, one of those, or maybe both, maybe 21 through 23, that same scripture, Jesus talks about those who appear to be of the light that, but aren't really. And, you know, says that when their time comes, they're going to say to him, like, um, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Like, basically, didn't we do your work? And he says, he promises to still say, get away from me. I never knew you. So these are the people of whom we need to watch out. Um, the scriptures also describe like the, the quote unquote devil coming as the coming as an angel of the light, right? And fooling people. But again, ultimately you should be able to see, uh Oh, that's not who I thought it was, or this is this situation is not what I thought it was. And I think that right now, again, as I mentioned in that reading is a time to do that. Okay. So death and release, we might need to release some people, places, and things, um, that are not for us, that are dark and, and of a past life, you know, a past um, time in our lives, even on this plane, when we were in a darker place, but we're not there anymore, right? We moved on, we've transformed, transitioned from that with like energy of death. And so now like we leave that behind and we move closer and closer to the light. And opening to the three of earth, the power of creativity, recognition for very high quality work. Be a team player. The three of earth is about abundance that is earned. And as it relates to being an ascended being for me, it is very much so about ascension, right? The, the reward, the promotion, the raise is in a more literal sense, like being raised, being elevated. When we see the three of earth in a general reading, also it can have something to do about work. You could maybe be involved in a project with two other people or something like that. Death, I'll go one more. And it's the king of earth who is generous, professional, responsible, and practical. A successful time. Confidently accept opportunities you're offered. You have the Midas touch. And the king of earth now at the top. I'm going to cut. So these will be general messages. I want I have the romance deck here to get us some more directly love related messages because love could come up here too. In the general, I'm not, you know, I don't direct the reading. Whatever comes up is going to come up. Uh, I'll come to the hermit with Archangel Raziel. Spend time in quiet meditation, spiritual teaching, self-discovery. There's Raphael, by the way. Um, the hermit is... I think particularly now, 
about enlightenment. So probably connected a whole lot to that three of earth and the abundance, the elevation, the rays, the promotion, the ascension. You will be your own teacher and student. The overall energy is the queen of fire. Confident, warm, intelligent, and graceful is the queen of fire. Stretch your wings and fly. Don't underestimate yourself. Assert your independence and creativity. The queen of fire is a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, or somebody taking on that those energies or traits of those particular signs of a fire sign, that passion and stuff like that. Um, also, the queen of fire of any zodiac sign represents the it's, it's the quintessential divine feminine of the tarot. The masculine is the page of earth, scholarly, dependable, patient, and successful. So this represents the sign of Virgo most directly for me because it's the, this is the page is the more youthful of the um, sign, the element of earth. It can represent an actual person and perhaps a younger person, if not a Virgo, it can be a Capricorn, right? Um, Saturn recently entered Capricorn, speaking of the three of earth, after three years of having been in Sagittarius, Capricorn just, I um, mean, Saturn just entered Capricorn. Um, the sun enters Capricorn this week, perhaps the same, is it the 21st or 22nd? 22nd, I think, the sun enters Capricorn. 22nd also, we will be alleviated of Mercury in its retrograde. It will enter shadow, right? It'll go direct. Um, but yeah, this may be a Virgo because that, because we just left the hermit. And the hermit also represents the sign of Virgo in the tarot. Scholarly, dependable, patient, and successful is the page of earth. Good news about financial matters. Wanting to do something more challenging, maybe even a new area of study. So the masculine in particular, um, connecting this to the three of earth again, may be working on some sort of project at work or learning a new vocation, maybe sitting at somebody else's desk or at somebody else's machine, or, you know, if he works in a plant or factory, um, learning a trade, new vocation, maybe going to school for the job or something. Sometimes we have to go get a certification and stuff like that. Masculine may be working on that right now. And he's surrounded by that night of fire. So that's back. Passionate, adventurous, self-assured and restless is the night of fire. A sudden event that needs immediate attention. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. Again, the night of fire is Prince Charming for me. Uh, coming to, he comes to the rescue and does represent like our overall energy of the queen of fire, the signs of Sagittarius, Aries, um, Leo, and again, Scorpio as well at being ruled by Mars as does the ace of fire, which is in the masculine subconscious. And is all about a brand new beginning, something that we are particularly passionate about. So it can be a new job, but if it's a new job, it's like doing what something we enjoy doing. Um, you got a job DJing in a club. You've always enjoyed playing music, listening to music. It's always touched your heart in a special way. Um, I don't know where that one came from, but <laughs> something like that. You, uh, or maybe you were a, a geeky kid like me and for Christmas and everything, you always wanted, um, chemistry sets. You wanted to blow stuff up and set stuff on fire and whatever. And now you're finally going to school to get a biology or a chemistry degree. And that's something about which you're passionate, you know, all those kind of things. I mean, it, it can be anything, but it's something that you really desire. And if it's a person, cause it can be a person too. It's somebody about whom you are particularly passionate. So this is a, a really special, um, new beginning because it, it's something that, that causes you, you set your soul on fire. Right. Um, and like for whom your heart, you know, burns and your passions burn. Also the ace of fire for me, especially in the traditional tarot here, it's connected with the moon. There's this huge moon behind this, um, masculine here. And he's holding one big 
like staff. Um, in the traditional tarot, particularly the Rider Waite tarot, you know, it's, it's a huge staff that the guy is holding. It's very phallic. And so, you know, it represents, quote unquote, the wand for me or sex. And we did have that sex dice again, both in this reading and I'm pretty sure in both of the readings I did over the weekend for, you know, the general energy and the love energy. The feminine is the king of air. Brilliant, impartial, professional and diplomatic is the king of air. Now, this can be representing Mercury, which rules Virgo. So maybe that's why the Virgo is popping up too. Brilliant, impartial, professionally and diplomatic is the king of air. Speak your mind with confidence. Seek out professional advice, balance mental and emotional considerations. King of air also rules Gemini or, or Mercury rather also rules Gemini. King of air can be representing Aquarius or Libra as well, however, or anybody taking on those traits or attributes, particularly fair and liberal and diplomatic and like a judge, right? And very impartial listens to both sides, speaks their mind clearly, straight to the point. If this is a person in your life, somebody with traits like that, surrounded by release. Here's your air and water. Yet again, we've been seeing this for like a couple months now. Uh, release again is death in the traditional tarot. Major arcana card number 13 represents the sign of Scorpio. Can be other water sign too. Cancer, Pisces. It's the end of a phase or a situation. Spiritual transformation. It's time to move on. Um, so this is also, again, on the 22nd, there's the end of a actual season. Um, or with the 21st is the end of an actual season. We begin a new season. So this can be connected to that. And the, tw the 22nd, again, um, is the end of the Mercury retrograde. So this can be marking that as well that something may go on in the life of the feminine connected to that. Ooh, in her subconscious, mental anguish and pain. Um, this is in her mind. Okay. Especially in this position, great sadness, take time to heal. There's a need to forgive yourself and others. So there can be some paranoia or she could be thinking about, you know, a situation that's ending in her life. That's a possibility too perhaps involving an air sign or involving a Scorpio or other water sign. Crowning. It's the wheel with Archangel Michael, which represents for me the planet Jupiter and the sign of Sagittarius yet again. Also Scorpio as one of the fixed signs, which it rules Aquarius, Leo and Taurus. So we're surrounded by all of those. A time of positive change. The situation suddenly moves forward. Fortune is on your side. So this is abundance in all forms. And maybe you got to decide what you want in that case. At the root here, the seven of water, a complex decision. There's a need to do research. Stop procrastinating. We do have um, a couple of things in shadow involving Neptune and Pisces. We have Neptune's uh, retrograding shadow and we have also Chiron, uh, which went direct on the 5th of December in its shadow. Um, it was retrograde in Pisces as well. So that can be what this is about too. The seven of water tends to represent the planet Neptune for me because it's like that kind of foggy energy and dreamy. Um, what should I do? Or you know, my head is in the clouds, that kind of thing. At the heart of the matter, the night of earth, loyal, dedicated, honorable, and kind is the night of earth. Time to buckle down and get things done. Honor your commitments. You have a guardian angel. The night of earth can absolutely be representing the sign of Capricorn, um, Virgo yet again, or Taurus connected to the wheel under which it sits, um, as a fixed sign. And going on to love, beginning with the, this could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek and opening to give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. This could be the one. And you deserve love, more Sagittarius. For me, you are lovable. That's my Cupid card. This could be the one. Heart to heart conversations. That could be the king of air there. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. 
maybe the feminine receives some news here in the honest discussion that you know brings some sadness and or um this could be like paranoia <laughs> that that's what she's going to receive um you know being being hurt and doubtful and fearful and all that kind of stuff in advance of a conversation that's possible too and since I said this could be a judge and this is the death card that can also be um, like the end of some sort of legal matter, perhaps, perhaps a divorce. It doesn't have to be that any kind of legal matter coming to an end too. this could be the one and worth waiting for divine timing is at work in your love life. Worth waiting for. I'm going to go ahead and cut. unrequited love there's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going so again this could be something or someone Raphael, yet again um that we are cutting off because it's just not there it doesn't have to be a person actually again it could be a circumstance a place we got we've got to be done with this job we got to be done with this old apartment or house maybe there's too many sad memories there whatever the case is there's not enough attraction to keep it going Overall energy is keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. This seven um, or cups cards in general, water cards in general can represent children for me too. This seven of water can be something having to do with somebody's child also. And again, maybe connected to like some kind of family court matter. Here at top of the page of earth, honeymoon, enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. So we are in the midst right now of holiday time of Hanukkah and of right upon Christmas and the new year, all that kind of stuff coming. So this can be a literal um, holiday or time together that somebody is spending. You can also, this is also a card of movement. So it can be like moving forward finally, where there was no movement before something was stagnant, maybe connected to the night of earth, which is slow moving. All of a sudden it's finally going. This can be finances too, or that, um, job movement, the learning of a new vocation or trade. Maybe you were supposed to do it before it didn't happen. And it's finally happening now, but in love, something was stagnant. It's moving and it may boil down to physically traveling and, you know, to see one another or something and, or, um, you know, where there it's metaphorical, where there wasn't movement before there is now. And see movement in your finances. That's what I was feeling, um, first. So even though this is like the love portion, I, that's what came out of my mouth first, because that's what I was feeling. This explains why I was feeling that. Finances and career are involved. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. And that's the sudden, again, this is a card of movement too. Wands cards are fire cards. They are cards of movement. And this is a sudden event that needs immediate attention. So all of a sudden there's movement in the area of your finances and it's a happy time for you. So it's, a, it's very positive. It's not movement in a negative direction. This is movement in the right direction. Atop the ace of fire, codependency, addictions are affecting your romantic life. So there may be, again, something that you need to cut off so that you can start a new beginning. I was at my, my best friend, her birthday was, um, the 19th and we had, um, a really long conversation today, like in follow up because I had called her, I texted her, of course. And I, I text out the whole song, happy birthday to you, all that kind of stuff. Actually, it was both of my best friend's birthdays yesterday. Um, and today she didn't, she, we didn't speak. And I was thinking, oh, she's having a really awesome birthday. Maybe the wand and all that, right? No, <laughs> no, she got vertigo. So the, she called me back today to say, like, explain why we hadn't um, talked and stuff. Why am I bringing all this up? Well, we got into a conversation about her long time off and on mate. Um, 
probably karmic soulmate, really long relationship. I don't even know how many years it is at this point, but things just have gotten really, really strange and disappointing and all that kind of stuff. And so she finally decided to completely like close the door on everything. Like they were, even they were at the point where they were only friends, but like, we don't even have to do that anymore right now. And there may come a time maybe in the future again, when, you know, we can hit each other up and say, you know, Hey, how you doing? Or long time, no see all that kind of stuff. But like that time isn't now that she decided that there had to be a reason why her new beginning wasn't coming through, that it was blocked by something. It was blocked by something that needed to end, right? That death needed to come to this old situation so that she could get the new one. So she's done that now. She's like not even going to actively be friends. Here atop the king of air. Wedding. This situation involves marriage. So again, for some, it's, it's the end of a marriage. Um, sitting here atop release or death. I had already felt legal situations and divorce and other family situations. So th that's what this is here. Um, for others, it can be positive, right? I said I felt this guy was a judge too. He can be marrying you. Maybe somebody goes down to the justice of the peace. We have wedding, mirroring, honeymoon. Um, that certainly would involve finances and career. But it's again, it's a good time. It's positive both all of these crossing the night of fire in the middle. So you are um, abundant. It is an abundant time. We saw the king of um, earth before for the reading for the week. The king of earth, I think, was at the heart of the matter. So that's not like to worry. Atop death, express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. So it's the end of that period. Again, Mercury retrograde when it might not have been a good time for us to talk. It's the end of that, right? I was just saying the, that's what these two cards could represent. The king of air sitting atop death can represent the end of that period and Mercury going direct. Now it's time to express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. A much better time to talk, especially if you are, in my opinion, a Gemini or Virgo, which are both ruled by Mercury, particularly Gemini. And here atop the three of air, rather than get in your head like a Gemini or other air sign may and overthink something and drive yourself nuts, cause yourself mental anguish, the romance angels say trust. This situation is calling for you to have faith. And you'll notice this is another couple in wedding attire. So we're like both rooted and crowned by a couple in wedding attire. This is a happy time, right? Enjoy the bliss. Don't worry. Think of these instead of, instead of three sad horses, the three little birds <laughs> that came up over and over in my reading last week. Um, don't worry about a thing. Every little thing is going to be all right. Crowning atop the wheel, healing family issues, your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. So that there's a positive time for that too. And it's based in karma. Right. Jupiter, which I said the wheel represents for me, is the planet of karma. So these situations, karmic situations involving our family, um, which can be former mates, our child's other parents, our ex-husband, ex-wife, all that kind of stuff. Um, or our new spouse, somebody who are wanting to marry now or our spiritual husband, our spiritual wife. Right. That's still a family issue and that involves wedding and honeymoon. And we have to heal things between the, all those people. Your love life benefits that you forgive your parents. Yes, that's quite true, but it's not only your parents. Anybody, anybody who is preventing your life from moving forward. Right. Because most people, we don't they don't impact us that in that way that we can't move forward. And if we're not in a good place with them, that, that applies to very few people to whomever it is that it does apply your parents and anyone else, you have to fix that. Now you can fix it in my opinion by either repairing the relationship if that's possible or walking away from it, even if it is your parents. Sometimes, unfortunately, that has to happen. And that's going on right now, connected to karma. At, ooh, here atop the seven of water. Deception, someone's wearing a false self mask in this relationship. Well, again, we have a bunch of fantasy and choices and options. Maybe we're thinking kind of that we do because we're avoiding the real choice, right? Right. Only one is the real choice. Everything can't be the choice. So 
we could be lying to ourselves about what is the real um, option for us that would drive our passions. And instead, we're exhibiting some sort of codependent behavior, toxic behavior of which we need to let go, like death to that, this crossing the death here. At the heart of the matter, atop the night of earth, if we do decide what we want, if we do pick the choice about which we are passionate and settle on that and express our love um, and not worry about money and not worry about finances, trust the universe that it's going to do what it says it's going to do, what we want will come to us now. And that's that. Further to that, the masculine, the angels say to you, defend your beliefs and decisions. So there's another seven, right? We had a decision to make with this seven of water. The seven of fire says, stick to it. Like even if it doesn't make sense to other people, it's about what you're passionate. Cut your ties to those codependent situations and people um, and do what drives you or who drives you, you know, whichever is the case in, in your situation. Defend your beliefs and decisions. Stand your ground. Choose your battles wisely. So some, again, some stuff you're just going to walk away from and you're not even going to address. Some you're going to handle, you know, and that's up to you, which ones are which. And feminine, we now have a couple at the table because our overall energy, again, was already the queen of fire. When I pick this up, look what's underneath it again. This, this is back that three of earth is back, but the queen of fire was our overall energy. And now the feminine receiving the king of fire, who is motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic focus, 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 communicate with vision and be a leader. Take advice from someone creative. King of fire again is a, a Sagittarius, a Aries, a Leo, or even a Scorpio or any Zodiac sign. But I mean, those would be connected to, um, this fire perhaps, and maybe the planet Mars, perhaps that emperor kind of energy, but it can be any Zodiac and it is the quintessential divine masculine of the tarot. And the romance angels to the masculine, give your relationship a chance, work on your partnership. You got to put the effort in. And feminine religious factors. Your love life is being influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. That can be wedding. That can be divorce. Um, it can just be like the sanctity of the situation and how you deal with karma and family issues also attached to this card. That would be dependent upon the ideologies with which you were raised and all of that sort of thing, and can be the case as to how and why you are lying to yourself, if that applies to you. So you want to keep an eye on that. I hope that you guys find this reading helpful. I'll be back soon. <laughs> Namaste, angels.